So let's first of all understand the term morphology. As I told you, the meaning of the term morphology is word formation. Okay, the word morphology is the derivative of the word morpheme. Try to understand. The word morphology is the derivative of the word morpheme. Morpheme is defined as the minimal contrastive unit of a word. Minimal contrastive unit of a word. That is smallest distinguishable unit of the word. Morpheme is the smallest distinguishable unit of a word. Now, if we talk of the word systematic, the word systematic has uh, the has the morpheme system and the morpheme etic. So that becomes systematic. Systematic is derived of two different morphemes. That means it has two different morphemes. One is system and the other is atic. That is etic. So these are the two morphemes. The word humanist has two morphemes. One is human and the other is ist or say for example there is a word cis humanistic so the word humanistic has three different morphemes human humanist and humanistic so these are the three words and morphemes are human ist and ik hum humanistic so these are the three different morphemes now the word formation, the process of word formation, the process called morphology is the study of such words formed together by different combinations of the words that we have to understand. There are various processes of morphology. But before we go into the realm of morphology directly, let us first of all understand morpheme because once you understand morpheme, the whole process of morphology becomes very easy to understand. So. We have seen morpheme is the smallest distinguishable unit of the word. Remember, I'm talking about word because the area of morphology is limited to word only. You don't speak of the sounds. You don't speak of the sentences. You don't speak of the utterances. You don't speak of the tone and anything in morphology. Morphology is only related to the words. It is the study of words, how words are formed in English or any language. We are talking about English, so it is the study of words formed in English. Okay, so basically, broadly looking at them, we have two types of morphemes. There are two types of morphemes. You can see it on your uh, screen that types of morphemes are given. There are two types of morphemes known as free morphemes and bound morphemes. Try to understand because this is the very base that you have to understand. Free morphemes and bound morphemes. Free morphemes are morphemes. Basically, free morphemes are lexemes. They are independent words. They can stand on their own. They have the meaning in the dictionary. You can find them in the dictionary and you can find their meaning in the dictionary. Such morphemes are called free morphemes we also call them lexemes and just try to understand free morphemes now all the words that we see in the dictionary are examples of free morphemes there is another type of morpheme that is called bound morphemes now here is the important thing that you need to pay attention to bound morphemes are affixes Free morphemes are not affixes. Bound morphemes are affixes. What is an affix? Affix is a group that is added to something else. Affix is something that is fixed. Something that is fixed to something else is called affix. So remember, bound morphemes are affixes. Bound morphemes are affixes. And free morphemes are not affixes. They are independent words. Therefore, we call them lexemes. Now, but we don't study lexemes here because there are plenty of lexemes and we can't study all of them. All the dictionary, dictionary words are lexemes only. So we don't need to study the lexemes because they're the root words. And we don't study the root words. We study what is remaining because the process of word formation doesn't depend on the root words but upon the affixes 
and also some other things also but we don't study what is generally there so root words are there in the dictionary we don't talk of the root words they're lexemes they're their own meaning and they don't need to be attached to something else if they get attached to something it is because of them the other affixes get their meaning not because of other affixes they get their meaning therefore they're called independent morphemes they're not bound morphemes okay so they are affixes now there are it's very simple in fact if you re really want to understand and if you can uh, try to understand or if you can understand what i'm trying to tell you is it's very easy to understand now affixes there are two types of affixes one is called prefix another is called suffix prefix the word itself shows that what it means or the word itself shows that it means that prefix is something that is added to a word before it that is prefix something fixed before a word is prefix now we call independent words basis base we call it base lexin is generally termed as base in the terminology of morphology so we call them basis so prefixes are bound morphemes try to understand they're not free morphemes they're bound morphemes prefixes are bound morphemes that precede the base the definition are prefixes prefixes are bound morphemes that precede the base precede that come before the base try to understand with the help of example we have a word construct this is the base now if i fix re to the construct prefix re to the construct that becomes reconstruct so re becomes prefix re becomes prefix construct is the base so this is a prefix now what is suffix then exactly opposite of this if prefix precedes the base suffix follows the base prefix precedes the base and suffix follows the base follows means that comes after the base now let's come back to the word construct again the word construct if preceded by re becomes reconstruct and the word construct if followed by i o n that becomes construction 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 i o n so i o n e o n becomes a suffix in the word reconstruction re is a prefix and i o n is a suffix try to understand the uh, affixes or the morphemes that precede the base are prefixes and that follow the base are suffixes affixes that precede the base are prefixes and that follow the base are suffixes we can have two types of prefixes in english two types now this categorization depends on what do they do to the word actually now if you look at the word construct and if we prefix re to it that becomes reconstruct now construct is a verb and reconstruct is also a verb so re does not change the word class as it doesn't change the word class it is called class maintaining because word class is maintained what is meant by word class is maintained noun remains noun verb remains verb adjective remains adjective adverb remains ad adverb that is called maintaining the word class so construct is a verb reconstruct is also a verb install is a verb or installation for example installation is a noun so reinstallation is also a noun construct is a verb deconstruct is also a verb construction is a noun reconstruction is also a noun it doesn't change the word class of the word therefore it is called class maintaining prefix suffixes are the bound morphemes that follow the base that come after the base or that are added to the base after it 
that is called suffixes now in suffixes also we have this type of classification in fact we have three types of classification in suffixes some suffixes are class maintaining some suffixes are regarded as class changing depending on the word class whether they maintain or change and the last one is inflectional let me first of all talk to you about inflectional suffixes because they are very easy to understand inflectional suffixes do not derive a new word they only change their grammatical form as they only change their grammatical form they are also called grammatical suffixes that means if you are making past tense of a word of a verb for example there is a verb called play and if you are writing played in fact played is a different word from play but if you are creating a word played from play ed is a suffix but it is neither regarded as class changing or class maintaining it is regarded as an inflectional suffix because it is a grammatical suffix for example you have the word computer and you made it computers now when you made it make it computers the yes is a suffix but it is an inflectional suffix because it brings out only the grammatical change in the original word and nothing else the suffixes as prefixes do also change the word class or maintain the word class now those which change the word class are called class changing suffixes in fact they are called class changing derivational suffixes and those which maintain the word class are called class maintaining derivational suffixes derivational they are called because they derive a new word from the earlier word and therefore they are called derivational let us try to understand some of the class maintaining derivational suffixes with the help of a few examples the word class of the word friend is noun now you add a suffix shipped it and the word becomes friendship ship is a suffix the word becomes friendship friend is a noun friendship is also a noun now if friend is a noun and friendship is also a noun friend is noun and friendship is also a noun then word class is maintained it's not changed when word class is not changed the suffix is naturally called the class maintaining derivational suffix for example there is a word child and if you add hood to it that becomes childhood child is a noun childhood also is a noun so class is maintained word class is maintained that is also a word class maintaining derivational suffix okay i'm spending a lot of time on the process of affix section only for the reason that 90% of the words in english are formed by the process of affixation remember this this is very important so once you understand the process of affixation rest of the processes are very easy because there are only limited number of words that you have to keep in your mind or remember democracy is a noun democratic is an adjective word class is changed if the word class is changed the suffix becomes class changing derivational suffix for example there is a word reason reason and you add suffix a b l e able to so that becomes reasonable reason is a noun reasonable is an adjective word class is changed as the word class is changed it's called class changing derivational suffix and this whole thing is called the process of affixation now this in your book or in the syllabus is actually represented in the form of diagrams tree diagrams in fact now it will be difficult for me to show it to you in the form of tree diagrams but it's generally it generally you just binary cuts you write a word you uh, cut them into binaries at this side you write root or base yet at this side you write suffix if it is a class changing derivational suffix write class changing if it is class maintaining derivational suffix write class maintaining derivational suffix if it is inflectional suffix write inflectional suffix and after that write the suffix itself if it is a prefix right here base and on this side right prefix if it's class maintaining say class maintaining if it's class changing say class maintaining uh, class maintaining say maintaining if it is changing say changing it's as simple as that it's very simple i think there is uh, no more discussion needed anyways here we are going to put an end to the process of affixation